How's everyone doing tonight? Good? Excellent. It's getting a bit cold here, isn't it? So let's do a little bit of warm up. I'll get everybody warmed up, okay? So I want everyone to participate in this warm up exercise. So take out your phone, please. Everyone, everyone has a phone, I hope. Take out your phone. Okay, unlock it, please. Unlock your phone for me. You did it? Good? Excellent. So after you unlock it, please pass it to the person next to you on your left. <laughs> pass it the phone on your left. Come on. Do it, yeah, on your left. Excellent. <laughs> Don't be scared. So after, after, you, after you get someone else's phone, I want to do this for me, okay? Do this for me. Hold your phone, hold the phone with your left hand. And yes, yeah, thank you, good one. Extend your finger like this. Okay, okay, good. Now, every phone these days has a photo app. <laughs> okay, now go into photo app, find three favorite photos and send it to yourself. Go do it. <laughs> oh, good one. All right, stop, 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 <laughs> stop. Okay, don't do it. <laughs> All right, pass your phone back, please. Pass your phone back, please. Okay, possible. All right, hopefully you warmed up a little bit. I can, I can almost hear people's heart pumping. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Excellent. But more importantly, I hope you feel a little bit connected with your neighbor now. Okay, just a little bit connected with your neighbor now. Keep that in mind because that is what we're going to talk about today, human connection. But let me start by asking you a question. Have you ever had a broken heart? Raise your hand if I have a broken heart. Broken heart, yes, many people. Excellent. I had many, I had many. And let me tell you a story today, one of those breaking heart moments. Okay, so when I was young, when I was young, many kids were jealous of me because of my good look. <laughs> as, as you can see, don't you agree? <laughs> um, <laughs> Many kids were jealous of me because study was not my primary objective. I was a professional Go player. Anyone know this game? Professional Go player. Thank you. So Go is a traditional Asian game. Very complex, right? It's an art, it's a science, it's a sport. If you ask my parents, they would tell you it's a pretty reliable career without heavy lifting. I was born in Tianjin, China a small town of 20 million people. <laughs> That's right. And, 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 and when I grew up, I basically go to different cities and provinces in China, compete, go on behalf of my hometown. Now you ask, why is it so important for AI? If you are an expert, you know this. And these days, everybody, as we know, is becoming an expert. So everybody should know this, that Go has been long considered the holy grail for artificial intelligence. It's so complex, many people think it is impossible to be beaten by AI. Until 2016, this AI model from UK called AlphaGo defeated the best Go player at the time, Lee Si Do from Korea. He was my idol. I was watching the game, sitting there, heartbroken. What am I going to do with my life? <laughs> At the end, fear turned into curiosity. I started to learning AI very seriously. What AI can do, what AI cannot do. And you know what I found at the end? AI did not replace Go players. It made the game better. It made Go more popular than ever. It adds more dimension to the game and also it discovers moves and strategies no human ever thought of. All of a sudden, it was not human versus machine anymore. It was human and the machine pushing each other to see how far we can go. And that is exactly what I want to talk about today. In the age of AI, how can we embrace what makes us uniquely human? And how can AI spark deeper and more meaningful connections. Let's start with our professional lives, shall we? Everyone use ChatGPT this day by now, yeah? Everyone? 
But being an AI educator myself, I hear all sorts of interesting stories about ChatGPT. Will, Will, do you know there are two types of people in organizations? That people who use ChatGPT and people who also use ChatGPT, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> we call them the closet ChatGPT users. <laughs> Will, Will, I have been thinking about this. We really have to be really polite to AI. We've got to say thank you and you're, thank you, you will come to ChatGPT all the time because one day when AI takes over, they will treat us nicely. <laughs> so all these kinds of stories. But my favorite of all is a story of a good developer in my team, a good software developer. Let's just call him James. So James is very good with coding. He's very nice to people. Uh, he finished project always on time. Really good, fantastic bloke. He had one problem, though, his writing skill. Every time he writes an email, no one can understand it. Right? And let's just say if email can have a subtitle, he definitely needs a subtitle to the email. Until one day, until one day, he started sending all these beautifully written emails to myself and to the team. I was shocked. <laughs> my, my first reaction was, huh? <laughs> did, your, did your account get hacked? Because after all, we all remember that dear friend of ours, that prince from Nigeria. <laughs> yes? I'm still waiting for the $5 million he promised me. <laughs> and also invitation to his wedding. <laughs> so did his account get hacked? No, it didn't. He just started using ChatGPT. All of a sudden, he was able to communicate his ideas better. He was able to connect with his team more deeply. And that's magic. AI filling the gaps, turning a good team player into an extraordinary one. Let's move on to our social lives. Humans are social animals, yes? We can watch Taylor Swift on TV, but we don't do that. We want to go to concert. Yeah? We, want, we can watch AFL game on TV. Again, we don't like that. We want to go to the games. If you agree with me that humans are social animals, let me tell you this. My mom is the tiger. <laughs> in a very positive way, in a very positive way. She's very extroverted. <laughs> you see, myself, I'm an introverted person. You know, I moved into a new house three years ago. I don't want to talk to neighbors. I sit there, I lock my door, I shut down the curtain, I, I lock down everything, I disconnect my ring bell, uh, I, I, I even think about install AI security camera like this, right? <laughs> you can program it to shoot paintballs to strangers. <laughs> okay, this is a real product. If anyone want the URL for this, let me know. I can give it to you. <laughs> Look, my mom is the opposite. My mom is the opposite. She moved to a new house. She knew the neighbor immediately. One week later, they start having breakfast and dinner together. Two weeks, they start going shopping together. Three weeks, they go on a trip to Thailand. <laughs> if you gave her a whole new month, a whole month, she will convert the neighbors from Christian to a Buddhist <laughs> and convert them back to a Christian. <laughs> That's my mom. <laughs> Until one day, after she moved to Australia, she became quiet. She liked to shopping. She doesn't want to go out anymore. I asked her why. She said, when she goes into a shop, the shop owner will ask her, how can I help you? She doesn't know how to answer that. She simply does not know the language. Very sad. Then she discovered this generative AI-powered translation app, which really helped her. From that point on, she was able to communicate wherever she goes. She worked around Australia like a cultural ambassador. And she go back to shopping again. And every time she open her shop door, she go in like a Terminator. <laughs> See this movie, a Terminator. AI didn't just translate words. It gave her confidence. It made her feel connected to the place she lives in. Let's move on to a personal story, our personal lives. Many years ago, I traveled a lot. 
by the way, I, I love airports. I love airports. One thing I love about airports is the arrival hall, right? You, wait, you, you, you stand in front of the arrival hall, you look at people coming out, especially families, friends, loved ones. They come out, they give them a big hug, big hug. Those hugs are beautiful, beautiful hugs, yes? Except in New Zealand. <laughs> don't, don't, don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong. Still beautiful hugs, but you just have to watch your clock. <laughs> So some people ask me, my friend asked me, Will, airport pickups is so a waste of time. Can AI, you know, self-driving cars help us automate that? I said, I think yes. Yes, we can. But we can do something. Doesn't mean we should do something. AI should be automating the boring stuff out of our lives, not the beautiful moments. So, I was traveling a lot. And in one extreme case, I arrived back from Asia on Friday. I spent the weekend at home and go to the US on Monday. I want to spend a quality time with my son, Riz. I would, so I, I go into his room. I go into the room. I look at him, and he look at me. <laughs> I look at him, he look at me. Beautiful boy, beautiful boy, handsome boy. He, he looked exactly like me. So at that moment, my heart sank because I did not know what to talk to him about. Because I was away so much, I lost a common language with him. I don't know what his hobbies are. I don't know what he likes. I don't know what he doesn't like. Nothing. At that point, I set a goal for myself. I have to reconnect with my son. I have to reconnect with my son. And the way to do it is to learn Something new. And that something new was Pokemon. <laughs> Being grew up in China myself, I have no idea what Pokemon is. What's Pikachu? Is it a mouse? Is it a cat? Is it a banana? <laughs> no idea. So I had to start something I know well. I know technology well. I know AI well. I know finance well. So I used the AI to search the internet and build a comprehensive database of Pokemon card information and the pricing information. Then I was able to build an AI model on top of that to predict the Pokemon card market. Which card's going up? Which card's going down? <laughs> what, what's the price going to look like? And with that information, Riz and I started an online Pokemon card shop. This is still going on. He learned a lot of financial literacy. <laughs> uh, we, learned, we earned some good money. But most importantly, from that point on, I always, always have endless things to talk to him about. Fast forward a few years, we started using all sorts of AI tools, ChatGPT, Claude, MidJourney, and others. But our favorite of all has to be ChatGPT Voice. Every Saturday afternoon, I drop him to a swimming class. It's a 30 minutes drive. Traditionally, there has always been a negotiation. I like Chinese music. He likes English songs. Right, so we put on Spotify. We always argue about what to listen. These days, we don't do it anymore. We go to Spotify. We put on ChatGPT Voice then we have conversations like this. Hey, Riz, what are we talking about today? What is the maximum time zone difference? Hey, Riz, the maximum time zone difference is 26 hours, around the international dateline. Um, I want to buy a new sci-fi book for Riz. Any recommendations? How about The Wild Robot by Peter Brown? It's a great mix of sci-fi and adventure. Thank you. <laughs> Why are bananas considered berries? Bananas are considered berries because they develop from a single ovary and have a fleshy middle with seeds inside. So we have these kind of conversations all the time. We talk about astronomy, we talk about physics, we talk about medicine and everything. 
We also have fun. Um, there was once we asked ChatGPT voice to come up with a rap battle between vegetables. <laughs> and guess the winner was broccoli. So we've gone from tension to laughing our way to swimming classes, exploring the world together with curiosity. These drives have turned into some of the most connected moments we've ever had. We become very connected, father and son. AI didn't make me less of a goal player. It made me a better one. AI didn't make reason I argue less. It made us laugh more. AI didn't replace my mom's struggles, and it gave her confidence. AI, far from being just a tool, is reshaping how we connect. It's not about being perfect. It's about being deeply, beautifully, and hilariously human. The US election just finished. <laughs> if I may, just use a moment to impersonate a famous president, JFK, to end this session. So, my dear friends, I have a challenge for you. Next time, when you use AI tools, ask not what AI can do for you. <laughs> ask what AI can do for your families, for your friends, for your team, for your communities, for the person next to you. Ask what AI can do for us, all of us, together. Thank you.